Is the bicycle industry done with the do-it-all bicycle? Recently, we have seen a bunch of new companies come out with some speculating photos and also some brand new releases of climbing bikes or dedicated aero bikes. But for the longest time period, it seems like they're, all the bikes look the same and all the bikes were considered do-it-all bicycles. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the past of what bicycle histories used to look like, what kind of made this change to kind of make all these bicycles look the same that everyone says nowadays, and now for the reason of why I think these bicycle companies are now going to more dedicated climbing bikes, dedicated aero bikes, and dedicated endurance bikes like they used to be in the past. But we had this crazy kind of a five-year thing where every single bicycle looked almost very similar. So hopefully you guys enjoy today's video. So first and foremost, we have to go back, back in time to when bicycle companies used to make different looking bicycles and also bicycles that were meant for specific things. I'm just gonna use Specialized as an example because I know the Specialized lineup very well, but all companies were very similar like this. So Specialized has the Roubaix lineup, the Tarmac lineup, and the Venge lineup. And in these categories, the Roubaix was aimed at more of an endurance lineup with a more of a relaxed geometry bike. They had their Tarmac lineup, which was their considered their lethal weapon or their climbing bike, very lightweight, very light bike, easy to ride up hills. And then around 2012, 2013, uh, bicycle companies started to bring on the aero bike, start to take designs from TT bikes and make them more into a road bicycle with deeper shaped carbon airfoil tubing. But like I said, these bikes all had different geometries and all had different perspectives. As these companies would grow and they would learn from their designs each year and each year, they would take small little things from each design. They would take some things from the Roubaix. They would take some things from the Venge and they kind of mesh them into the next design for like a tarmac. Uh, if we look at these bicycles all back to back to back, we can see right here with the Roubaix. This is the SO4, one of my favorite Roubaix of all time. I think they did a great job on here. This is their endurance model. Nice slope top tube, very tall uh, head tube to make a more relaxed geometry, elongated front fork, and it is a noticeable difference from the Tarmac SO5 to the Roubaix. We can see the head tube back and forth. Boom, boom. We can see that a little bit more slacker front fork as well. It was, a, it was a great time. It was a, definitely a good way to say, hey, if you're looking for a more comfortable ride, go with the Roubaix. If you're looking for a bike that you want to climb and go ahead and smash for some KOMs, go with the Tarmac for a lightweight bike. Then they brought in the Venge, like I said, and that was a complete different bike. It looked absolutely insane, but the Venge was known to be a little bit harsh, very stiff, but very fast bike. If you want to get a Venge, you're getting it for a reason to race on or to perform a very fast race. Now, this is where it kind of starts to get into the do-it-all kind of bike that I was talking about that really did, you saw a company have a do-it-all bicycle and a lot of these bikes all kind of look the same. Specialized came out with the Tarmac SL6, which was the bike right after the Tarmac SL5, which was a huge change and a huge facelift for the bike. You can see they went from the regular seat stays that went up to the seat tube to a more aero seat stay that kind of is a drop seat stay that a lot of companies have went ahead and adopted. They also made this a little bit more aerodynamic and they said it's more compliant because it is a little bit lower so it's more comfortable for the rider. They brought in some aerofoil shapes or some more D-shaped seat posts as well to give her some aero qualities like the Venge. And then also, I don't know what it was about the SL6, but it was one of their most comfortable Tarmacs I ever rode or one of their most comfortable bikes in a long time. Some people always say that the Tarmac SL6, <laughs> some people always say, some people say that the Tarmac SL6 was the death of the original Roubaix, the Roubaix SL4. Uh, because of the fact that it was a bike that was so lightweight, it was so aero, and it was so comfortable to ride, that it really was a hard bike to kind of just choose between a Venge or a Roubaix. And I did have a lot of my older customers who did come from a Roubaix, and they would really consider going to the Tarmac SL6 because they put on these CLX50 wheels with a wider rim channel. They started adopting the 26C uh, tire. This kind of be became the beginning of the fad of the wider tires as well. And it was just a bike that was very, very comfortable to ride. Still to this day, people do say the Tarmac SL6 is one of the best bikes out there. And I know a ton of customers who are still riding the SL6 because of the fact that they see no reason to upgrade to the SL7 because they're enjoying it. Plus, it still has come, or it did come in a rim brake, so people do like that as well. But even with that, the company grew. They saw the changes they made in the SL6. They're like, wow, the results are great. It was more aero. It was faster and more comfortable than the SL5. And it was such a great weapon all around for a bicycle. Then they came out with the Tarmac SL7, which was one of the best, most iconic bikes in the past five years. A lot of companies base their bikes off it. It's a gorgeous looking bike, all that yada, yada, yada. 
They took everything from the Venge that they needed to, and they put it onto the SL7. They made the airfoil shapes even more. They made the seat post more aggressive. They made the head to more aggressive, and they added the internal cables. With this, so did a lot of other companies kind of go with this whole kind of do it all bike. One bike to rule them all as Specialized came out to say Tarmac SL7. And I'm going to go ahead and show up a lot of these bikes of what I'm talking about that they all do it the same. And again, keep in mind, uh, a lot of companies, will say, people say, why do all these bicycles look the same? Why they, there can be a winning formula out there. People will say, hey, this bicycle is doing something good. They're selling a lot of it. Or it's performing very well in the wind tunnel. Or it's performing very well on whatever kind of charts they want. So they say these companies might mimic it to the point of how it's performing. So if something's working and it's winning or something's working and the riders are giving them great feedback, yes, there might be a chance that all bikes might look the same with a little bit of a touch to their own secret sauce there. But let me give you guys an example of what I'm talking about. Now, before I show you guys this, all these bikes I'm about to show you guys, when this Tarmac SL7 first released, it was so well crafted by Specialized that they said that it was just as aero as the Venge and it was just more lightweight that they went ahead and discontinued the Venge altogether because of the fact that they said that it was kind of just redundant to have two of the same bikes in there. Again, to that whole, back to that whole point of the do-it-all bike, every kind of bike looked the same. Here is the Venge right here on this side. Drop seat stays, arrow, everything like that. Specialized Tarmac SL7. Venge, SL7. Venge, SL7. So just a little bit smaller tubings, but very similar in both aspects, okay? Now, watch. So this is what I like to call the do-it-all era, okay? This is where we kind of see, and I, trust me, because I run this YouTube channel, I see so many comments, I see so many people basically saying, all these bikes are the same. So I hear I have a... Uh, put together a bunch of bikes out here that look very similar in that aspect. Now, there are still companies out there that stay true to color. Actually, Trek during this whole thing is still one of those companies that really does stand by their Domani, Amanda, and Madone, and they look like three different bikes. Like the Amanda doesn't have the drop seat stays, Madone's doing its own thing with the airfoil uh, triangle, and then the Domani is like a full on endurance bike as well. So they've stuck by their guns, and everything's kind of going back to that point, which I'll show off later on. But right here, Let's start off. Tarmac SL7. Okay. Boom. Venge. Boom. Conago V3S. Drop seat stays, aero shapes, integrated cables. Next one. Addict RC Ultimate. Again, they're climbing bike with aero features, drop seat stays, aero features, integrated cables. Next one. BMC Team Machine. You rarely saw anyone in these Grand Tours ride the Time Machine. The Time Machine was still a great bike. The Time Machine was BMC's aero bike. But still, you were only seeing people run this Team Machine because of the fact that it was a do-it-all bike. Literally, aero, very aero shapes, drop seat stays, aero seat posts, integrated cables. Literally, almost identical looking. Next one. The new, dang it. The new, dang it, the new, dang it, <laughs> wait, <laughs> BMC, the new Cannondale Super 6 Evo, literally, back and forth, the do-it-all bike, they were riding this bike pretty much on the tour the entire time, I don't think I saw them ride the, the System 6 once, I might be wrong there, but, again, drop seat stays, aero seat posts, integrated cables, Orbea Orca which they just completely redesigned, which the Orbe Oracle, which I'll talk about in a second, but this was the current generation during this time period. Drop seat stays. Uh, I don't know if this one has the D-shaped sheet post, sheet post, but uh, the, the nice ones did. Integrated cables. Now, these ones are kind of throw-ins right here. You have the Factor Ostravam, which again, a lot of the teams for the Grand Tours are riding this bike, which look very similar to <whistles> this one right here. We have the Tarmac SL7, Factor Ostravam. They wouldn't really ride the Vamo 2 because I've heard that they said that it kind of felt like a, a little bit of a noodle, a little bit of a, a wishy-washy bike. But again, Factor's doing something, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, this bike. And then you also have the Canyon Arrow Road, which again, I would only see them pretty much ride the Canyon Arrow Road in these uh, races. I think even for Vanderpool is riding the Arrow Road for the Paris-Roubaix. Uh, Canyon did just release a brand new lightweight bike, which I'll talk about in a second again. But I think they used it for a gravel race, something like that. But again, you can see what I'm saying. 
all these companies have kind of put out this again and could just because of the fact that it's a winning formula with the drop seat stays and maybe it's what riders are liking it's more comfortable they have the aero seat face but again it was kind of killing off that bike because of the fact that if there were stages where it had flats on there but some hills they're like well there's no benefit to riding this crazy aero bike and be stiff and uncomfortable when i can have this bike that's pretty compliant here now fast forward to today's age before we fast forward I just because i don't have an editor before we fast forward like i mentioned before a lot of these companies specialized included got rid of their venge air road this scott attic during this time had the foil which was not remodeled their foil looked almost identical to the attic there was very little between the two of them the bmc time machine and team machine very little between the two of them let me show you guys so just for example this is their climbing bike with aero properties this was their aero bike climbing bike aero bike i mean very little here now scott did make their change to the foil because of the uci rule change where this allowed companies to have a deeper uci change but again, to this point, there was really no need to go to the foil because the addict was just a little bit lighter and it gave these people who were competing with the bikes a more comfortable ride for longer distances and it was a little bit lighter for the climbs. Same with BMC. They had the BMC team machine, which was their all around do around bike to their time machine, which was their aero bike, which literally, again, this has deeper tubes, but go back and forth, almost identical. And again, this would be a little bit more comfortable. This would be a little bit lighter. And it'll perform better overall in terms of like a group stage ride or something like that. You still have aero benefits with the wheels and the frame shapes. They're riding in a group anyways. So it would kind of hinder the use of these bikes being used. Now, fast forward to today. This is my point I'm trying to make. We have companies now that are going to get rid of this do-it-all bicycle. And what I mean by that is you're starting to see more companies lean really heavily and utilize what these bikes are made for. They're like, hey, if it's an aero bike, Hell yeah, we're gonna make it an aero bike. If it's a climbing bike, hell yeah, we're gonna make it a climbing bike. We're gonna get as close as we can to the 6.8. And this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the new Scott foil that just got released. It utilized the UCI three to one rule hugely by making bigger aero marginal gains in the head tube, bigger aero gains in the bottom bracket right here, and made this thing with the wheel tuck as much as they could. They made this thing a full on aero bike, which would be dedicated to like flat stages. Same with BMC. This bike, I don't know if it is released or not or it's what's going on with it, but this looks like the newly updated of the Time Machine. We can see here, it's, I like this bike. I like this bike a lot. Like I, I really do like this bike. I think this bike looks sick. Massive head tube right here. Really cool looking top tube with some kind of big top tube to skinny top tube to save weight. Big top tube to, or big down tube to big bottom rack area. This looks like an aero bike that is now taking advantage of some lightweightness as well. But again, you would utilize, you saw Ben O'Connor riding this in the tour pretty much the entire time. And it was an aero bike that, that he was enjoying riding. On this, the stages where they were climbing, they went to the team machine. And again, now to another bike. Now you're starting to see companies take advantage of this or really go after lightweight climbing bikes and then dedicate aero bikes. So we saw Scott foil with the revamps. We've seen BMC come out with this crazy new aero looking bike. Now with, you have the, in the recent uh, uh, launches, you had Canyon release a crazy lightweight climbing bike that was like under six, eight kilos built. You have uh, Factor, which just released their revamped O2 climbing bike, which is crazy lightweight. I think it's like six, six kilos out of the box. You have Orbea taking their Orbea Orca, which looked very similar to their Orbea Orca aero. This used to be the old Orbe Orca, which I just showed you. Drop seat stays, aero shaped foils, and they completely changed this bike to a dedicated climbing bike. That's the new Orbe Orca. Old Orbe Orca. They completely raised the seat stays. They made the tubes much smaller. They made it much more of a climbing bike. I think they said this thing's like six, seven kilos out of the box. Built. So <clears throat> you're seeing companies go like this route, and it really does make a separation of the Orca Aero and the Orca. So now you're giving consumers a better choice for that option. And you're starting to see, like I said, companies do the same. So here's my prediction with all this stuff, what you're going on. We can see here a bunch of new companies releasing bikes that needed revamps that people were waiting for, get them and make them focus on more like they said. We have the new factor climbing bike, like I just mentioned before, the VAM, which is a crazy lightweight. I mean, look how thin those freaking seat stays are. Look how thin that damn seat mass is. 
but again, it's meant to do a job of a climbing bike. Now there is no more confusion of which one to get if they want to get a bike, if they want aero flat roads, or if they want a climbing bike, which is cool. And they are still utilizing this frontal area to make it a little bit aero. The front forks are still kind of bladed. The head tube has that elongation of the carbon fiber on there. Integrated cable, stuff like that. Canyon has their crazy lightweight bike to really separate between the, if you want the uh, Canyon Ultimate or if you want the Aero Road as well, you have choices there again. And again, with the new Orbea, you can see they're kind of raising these seats to the back and make them look more like classic bikes. But again, again, they're utilizing this frontal area. I don't know why I'm stretching my arm. Just go with it. <laughs> utilizing this frontal area to make it more aerodynamic, but still keeping the lightweight carbon here. So I think, and then we have seen some spy photos of a bike company that I sell as well, Specialized, which we've seen, you know, of a bike in the area that looks like they slimmed it down a little bit. People said it's something like the head, but I got a feeling this bike is going to be amazing. But we're seeing more and more companies, like I said, go those dedicated routes. Trek has stayed on this area, and I give them kudos. They kept the Amanda for their climbing bike, the, the Mani, and the Madome. But there was a time where people were literally just using just last year for the Paris Bay, people were riding the Cervelo S5 in that race, which is an aero bike for that. People were riding the Canyon Air Road. People were riding the Tarmac SL7 on there. Basically just running these massive bikes or these, these aero race bikes, which is wide ass tire thing. I think now we're going to see the marketing thing go crazy. You're going to have dedicated bikes for that thing. I think you're going to see companies come out with endurance bikes meant for those endurance races, aero bikes meant for flat stages and climbing bikes meant for this. So we will see what happens here, but I have a prediction that uh, you're going to see some crazy lightweight bikes with aero features, and you're going to see some crazy aero bikes that are literally almost like TT bikes in terms of carbon fiber, like just like massive carbon fiber TT bikes with just drop down handlebars for aero bikes, which I'm all for. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think as well, what your predictions are, what you're waiting for. But uh, I have a feeling that we're going to see some cool bike tech coming up. Okay, it's not my fault that the past five years, every single bike looked the same. Everyone wanted that bike and everyone liked the way it rode and everyone liked the way it looked. So they're listening to the consumers. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next video. And I'll see you guys. It's 10, 12, 30. Holy shit, it's 12, 30. Oh, my God. Bye.